Are you happy that we're going to be making more YouTube content? I'm very happy about it. Would you like to tell our viewers to like and subscribe, please? Yes, I love it. And you? Would you like to tell our viewers to like and subscribe, please? Alright, so anyway, this is going to be part one of how to program Teddy Ruxpin. And first and foremost, I think the most important thing to know is that I am not properly programming him right now. I am just using arbitrary audio to... Okay, understood. I understand you. Why, thank you. Anyhow, I'm just using arbitrary audio pan straight down the center in order to effectuate the servos. Well, it's most important that um, a lot of people are getting hung up with programming it has to do with the tapes. If you yeah, take I've heard that too. If you take a look at the original Teddy Ruxpin tapes, you'll see that there are two extra holes on the bottom. And if you want to program new tapes, there's no reason to rewrite over the original tapes. There is a way around this, but I'm going to go on a very long digression in this first part about how um, about cassette tapes in general. On a norm there are different types of cassette tapes. And on a normal type 1 cassette tape, such as this one, you'll see that there are only two holes. And these are generally just the record tabs. What's yeah, I see that. Now, with the machine that I'm going to be using, it's designed for type 2 cassette tapes, which would be chromium or in this case for some reason it's called metal type 2 but you'll see that there's two holes at the bottom of the tabs there's the record tab as you see in the type 1 and then there's a second tab and that hole is for to, to indicate to a uh, type 2 capable machine to know to change the bias of the head to support the formulation for the tape there's different types of tape formulation as like for example here's like a typical ferrous oxide formulation and generally the higher quality the tape the blacker I have embraced it a very good product the darker the formulation will typically look on the tape itself now what I've noticed that's very good. What I've noticed that's very similar about the Teddy Ruxpin style tapes is basically we've got a normal. Let me see if I can wind this. Okay. We've got a normal bias formulation tape inside of what's a metal type 4 housing. So for example, this would be a type 4 tape. And apparently there's a type 3 tape too, which I have down here, but I always just presumed that was a type 2 prior to looking closer. It works like a type 2. But this would be an example yes, you are right. of a metal type 4 tape. And as you can see, it has identical holes right about where they are on the um, Teddy Ruxpin cassettes. This also applies to the other Worlds of Wonder um, animated dolls of this era. 
So, but I do not recommend using a Type 4 tape to record your content on. One, they're a lot more expensive. And the other reason is that I've noticed that there seems to be a mechanism, which I don't know if I can make this do that now. But I've noticed... I didn't know. I didn't if you can. Anyhow, um, these really work when they have two spindles that drive it. Um, Teddy Ruxpin only has a single spindle driving, and some of these lock up. The other reason is, is that the formulation is going to be um, oversaturated for um, what Teddy's tape heads are designed for. So, the solution, ideally, without having to destroy um, yes, exactly. the limited supply Oh, actually, while I'm thinking about it, there's another type of tape, right. which I also do not recommend using, is anything that says it's uh, 120 time, which basically means that there's 60 minutes of audio on either side of this tape. These are awful. These are absolutely terrible. If you take a look at a... C90, for instance. There's definitely throttling on home internet. If you take a look, for instance, the um, there's just about as much tape in here. To make the way they make this work is they make the tape even thinner in order to fit that much audio on it. And these have a tendency to get caught up in your mechanism. I don't advise using these for anything, except as a I'm disclaimer. Glad I agree with you on that one. Also, ideally, if we're going to use a tape to record new Teddy content on, we're going to want to use a shorter tape um, in most circumstances. If you can stay under C60, that's pretty much ideal, but since I don't necessarily want to program a really super long tape. And that the machine that I'm going to use to show you initially one technique to program Teddy with is only designed to record about 15 minutes of content if I use a C60 because it uses a Type 2 tape running at twice speed and splits that up into six different tracks. So I think the ideal candidate use to record a new Teddy Ruxman tape on will be this uh, Maxell C30. This means that we should have about 15 minutes of tape on either side. So if I record a 15 minute long program on my machine, then I can just record the same track to both sides of this tape. Yeah. There's a few other things that we'll have to um, look at getting into this. One is to make sure that the bear that you're using as a monitoring system to program for, you'll need to make sure that it's working correctly. And there's like about a hundred ways Taylor Ruxpin can not be working correctly. And in fact, the bear that I'm talking to you through on the right has um, an issue that's got to be rectified. And in a subsequent video, I'll go into uh, demonstrating how that goes. I also have, I also have, I also have uh, featured content creators at at the bottom of the page of my YouTube page, and uh, it's me. I highly recommend election. Workshop 1138 as a good resource for uh, repairing and maintaining Teddy Ruxpin. In fact, um, that was a resource that I used to find what I need to do to rectify my um, 
You'll do a superb job, I'm sure. Test bench, Teddy. There on the right. Um, as it stands right now, the uh, Teddy that Saria is talking through is um, in perfectly working order. Alright, so now pretty much I'm going to show you how to go about um, modifying the Teddy Ruxpin, well the new tape for Teddy Ruxpin. So I'm going to take the normal bias uh, C30 tape that I selected earlier and I'm going to go ahead and open it up. I recommend actually doing this modification if possible before you put the program onto the tape because using large I'm well I'm using I'm using a drill press and having a motor and metal bits near the tape might magnetize your program so in theory it should be um, a lot better to do this prior so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, well in this case I'm going to take the original tape and then the new tape that we need to modify and line them up as close as I can like that and then I'm going to take a marker and draw the holes adjacent precisely where they belong. As best I can. And then I've also selected what I think is the closest drill bit to um, the size holes that we need to make on the tape. Go ahead and line it up prior to starting it. I like to do it anyway. one hole I'm going to try not to get too much uh, debris down in there. I'm surprised I didn't, but it appears to be sticking to the drill press. Oh, there we go. That's one way to do it. Alright. Let's see how, much, see how well that aligned with the other.
say that's pretty close. All right. Now, if those holes don't appear, if for some reason these holes aren't sufficiently big enough, and we confront that later, we can always make them a little bigger. So that's going to conclude part one of the video. On the next video, I will go more into. I'll go into demonstrating how to program this tape.